<laughs> Going live! What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Sorry, I was a little slow on the button there, but hey, wanted to just go with you early afternoon here because there is lots of golf news coming out. And if you're not a golfer, it's all right. You can just hang out with me. And I just thought I would share one of my opinions here. So I've been following the releases thus far. Uh, Callaway has had their new road drivers come out. Tyler Maid has released their new stealth driver, which was kind of spoiled early because Tiger Woods was playing with it. There were some pictures out there. And this is the new Taylor Maid stealth driver. And it's kind of interesting, unique, innovative in some ways here. This is actually this red portion here is actually a carbon fiber face so if you know golf clubs or drivers in particular this has generally for the well, last decade been a titanium face and the carbon fiber here 60 plies of it in fact is supposed to be just as strong as uh, titanium and it's supposed to be lighter and that allows them to redistribute the weight now i was really excited about this and i wanted to check it out but to me after looking at it it's not worth the upgrade now i'm going to explain why here so elihu man you're always uh here so welcome thanks back uh thanks for joining me on the live stream andy good to see you too so i'm super excited that i caught some of you guys i figured maybe you'd be doing a little work school maybe although I don't know. Some of you might not be back at school quite yet. But this is the Stealth Driver. It looks cool. You can actually get this in the My uh, TaylorMade program with a different colored face here. The, the red is not a byproduct of it being carbon fiber. I mean, it kind of is, but it's intentional. You can actually get it in a few other colors. If red is not your thing, it's not really my thing, but it definitely stands out. It's definitely kind of the Louboutin of golf clubs. <laughs> if you wear the red sole shoes, you know what I'm talking about. But what this allows you to do is, you know, it, it allows it to be a little more muted. That's kind of what I'm hearing is it's a little duller. You know, you get a lot of ping when, thus the name Ping Golf Clubs, when you hit off of a titanium face. And so one of the things here is it's supposed to be a little duller. It's supposed to be lighter, uh, allow you to redistribute that weight, make it more forgiving. But people have been testing this out. No, Andy, you keep up the good work, brother. Um, and, uh, Andy's my uh, brother from another mother out in the East Coast there. So one of the things here is that it's really about weight distribution and forgiveness. So I've seen people testing this and they're saying they're getting the same distance and really the, it's not a secret about it, but the way the USGA rules are, is unless you're going to go to a high core driver, all driver faces can only be a certain amount of springiness. So when people keep testing drivers to see if they're going to get more distance, it's not really something that you can get by the face, you know, uh, by, or by innovating in the face. Because the face, you know, when they test it, they kind of fire a little like ball bearing at it to test how springy it is. And that can only be a certain amount of springiness. So they're all going to generally be about, be the same unless the rules change or unless you're going to go with a non-conforming driver, something that's illegal for USGA play, which is absolutely fine. You can absolutely get those. And I don't have it right in front of me, but I have a crank golf driver, which is a high core driver. And you can play with those. You know, the benefit of those, I think, is maybe five, six yards. So it's not huge, but without rule changes, there aren't going to be new innovations that really uh, allow a driver to be significantly materially farther than current drivers. Now, the one thing about this, Joshua, you've been subscribed. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Although it's probably been hard on you to see my face every day, but I am certainly glad you're here. Uh, and Mr. Z, JZ, my friend, uh, Hope you are doing well, too. Another Chicago panda here. And um, Andy asks, how often do I play golf? Well, here in the Midwest, in the Chicago area, it is, I think it is nine degrees outside right now. So there is no golf outdoors right now. Although when my buddy was here on Thanksgiving, we actually did play outdoors. And it was like 37 degrees, so it was pretty cold. By the eighth hole, we were thinking of calling it quits, although we played nine. Now, indoor golfing here becomes very popular in the winter. Uh, it's a business where I'm, I really enjoy it. I like it, but it's also one of those where, man, they have a slump for like six, seven months of the year when the summer out, there's just no one there. So I'm not sure how good of a business this is. Re we review you. Thanks for joining me here, man. Must have been on the computer. We review you as another YouTube channel. You, If you actually uh, want to hear just a little bit of the, the backstory to this channel, you can hear it on We Review You. There is a video where um, I talked to Sean and uh, we just kind of rapped about doing doing the YouTube thing. So uh, back to my tailor-made here in that it's really about weight options, right? And you can put the weight down low here. Now, the thing about that is that they could have 
actually make the stealth driver a lot more forgiving. So basically, when you play around with the weight, you can make it a little more forgiving, more forgiving to off center hits. You can make it fly a little higher, right? You can put that weight low, that gives it kind of some more dynamic loft, all those things. But what I actually really thought was interesting is that they said there were a couple things. One, it was 44% lighter than titanium, so they allow it allows them to redistribute the weight, which is what we're talking about. But it also said that it allows them to make the face 11% bigger. Now, this has actually been a complaint of mine on Titan or on TaylorMade drivers. This is a TaylorMade Sim 2 uh, Max. So this is a driver I play. I really like it. And what you can see here on this driver head is that it's not that big. It looks pretty big. And I'm going to show you here. But if you look at where the toe is, we've got all of the space where the head curves in. And then the, the flat portion, the bulge and rolled, face portion where you will hit it is actually pretty small. Now I've got this other driver. This is a light speed M80 driver. And you can see I've got them right next to each other. I'm going to just center them right here. And look at how much different it might be a little bit of an optical illusion. But top to bottom, height wise, this face looks a lot bigger. And side to side here, it's a little hard for me to see what's going on. Um, it, it's, it looks a lot bigger. So what I think is on most drivers, especially Callaway and Cobras, as far as I can tell, there seems to be a lot more surface area on the face. And that to me is really um, very comforting when I get up to a drive. You know, I know I've got kind of that uh, vertical or horizontal forgiveness because I've got so much surface area, so much real estate. This Sim 2 driver here is not that forgiving. In fact, I've hit some right on the top here, not like off the top portion, it just wouldn't fly anywhere, but kind of right in here sometimes, right above this top line. And the ball still flies, but I end up skying it because I think that as that ball compresses, it reaches over the edge here. Now, if I hit it on this light speed driver, and I was telling a buddy of mine as we we're golfing, that I was like, I still don't hit anything better than I do uh, with this light speed driver. I mean, I've tried the Callaway LS, the Epics, you know, I've tried the, the, the Cobras, um, the, the latest ones, the Rad Speeds. You know, I, I go through a lot of clubs throughout the year just to test stuff out. That's slowing down because once you figure out that what you can hit, then you kind of stick with it. This TaylorMade, I can hit, but I still don't hit it any better than this $150 driver head. And I think the big piece here is that one, it's CT, it's coefficient of restitution, is the same as all the rest. So it's going to fly just as far as if you hit it in the center. And because of its big size, it's very forgiving. So if I do hit it up above center, where I would on the TaylorMade too, if I just hit it like a ball above center, what I have here is more space for it to actually compress the ball fully and fly it out there. So I just hit this better. I actually think it's more forgiving in when they say, hey, it allows us, or when TaylorMade says, hey, it allows us to make the face 11% bigger, more forgiving for those off-center hits. Well, I say, surprise, man. I feel like this is probably the most unforgiving face on a driver. It's not unforgiving. I mean, it's only marginally smaller than I think some of the other driver faces. And it's not the driver size. I still think it's a 460cc head. It's just the way that they wrap this all around. And that's, I guess, like a tour-friendly type of thing where it really teardrops in. But for us amateurs, oh, French word for you, us amateurs, you know, bigger is better, more forgiving. Obviously, you know, every time they have crept up driver heads, I remember when they were really small, I played with a wooden driver when I started, and then you go to... Um, I don't remember what they were, stainless steel or aluminum or steel or something like that. You know, they just kept grouping up. And I remember when the Callaway Big Berthas came out and they were like, these, this is the biggest, drive, biggest driver ever. And I was like, holy smokes, these things are big. So it was uh, pretty interesting. Joshua says, uh, my Motorola phone sports QC 2.0 and that USB-C power delivery. Power delivery. It's great, man. I'm a big fan of it. Didn't really understand it when it came out, but man, it charges things fast. So ice cream, ice cream. How you doing? I am glad you were here. Hopefully this is helpful. And, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, I am a sucker for the new and the shiny. Obviously, I show you a lot of that on this channel here. You know, so when new drivers come out and they highlight a feature that might be beneficial to me, maybe more forgiving, more distance, whatever it might be, I'm always curious to try it out. You know, a lot of the local stores will allow you to hit some some drives. It's hard to say after a few swings, you know, in the simulator, whether they're going to improve you or not. So a lot of times if I think something's promising, I'll buy it, just share it with you on the channel anyway, play with it on the golf course. And um, like I said, I've just tried a lot of stuff and like this cheap driver, just, I don't hit it 
I don't hit anything as well as I do this. And so if I'm going to go out and really play for score, which isn't very often, mostly it's for cores, lights, and uh, friendship and fellowship. But if I'm really going to go out and try to eke out as much distance, you know, I'm actually going to grab this little bad boy. Now, if I'm going to golf somewhere where, you know, some a, a buddy of mine's inviting me to his country club or something like that, and I want to have kind of a recognizable club in the bag, I'll throw in that tailor-made, you know, so people don't think I'm cheating. And, and the real reason is this is an all titanium head. I think this whole thing, there's no carbon fiber anywhere in it, and it is very loud. Despite the, the fact that I hit it great is is awesome, but it is very, very loud. And it's loud enough that if I'm hitting it indoors in a simulator, I try not to hit it that much because I just feel like it sounds like someone is swinging 190 miles an hour and smashing a golf ball into pieces. Um, it's probably what Bryson sounds like in a golf in a golf uh, simulator with a normal club, but it's just, it's really loud. So outdoors, it's no problem. But if I want a little more duller thud in the drive with pretty much pretty similar performance, but maybe like I said, not as forgiving, I'll, I'll go with the Taylor Me. Uh, clubs have changed so much over the years. They totally have. I would say though, that um, the clubs that I've had in the last 10 years have been very, very similar. And I think it's really the rules. I think the technology caught up to the rules and then the rules have kind of plateaued club development. If the rules were broken open, or if more people would be okay with playing for fun as opposed to buying USGA approved equipment for their amateur rounds, then I think some club manufacturers could really develop really sweet golf clubs, really sweet golf balls, those types of things. In fact, I think uh, PXG is probably, I would have said go uh, Cobra six months ago. But I think PXG is really one of those people that is really thinking, rethinking golf clubs. So if you are a person who doesn't really play a lot of golf, is thinking of taking up golf. You know, for me, I try to play in the summer to answer uh, Joshua's question earlier. Uh, you know, I, I try to play a couple times a week in the summer just because the, the summers are so fleeting and it's and it's really a chance for me to go with friends. I don't go by myself or anything like that. But if I can play golf and get a couple hours in, hanging out with some friends and a drink, that's really fun. I mean, we played maybe nine holes, grab a grab a, 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 a Coors banquet afterwards and just chew the fat a little bit. So that's really what it's for. But um, that being said, if if people would kind of, I think, especially the amateurs would unthink what they need to think, you know, it just how can I enjoy the game more and not necessarily sweat, oh, this is compliant, you know, this is USGA approved and all that stuff and just get rid of the idea that you're ever going to play in a professional event. Um, then I think it'll be more fun. And PXG, I think, is doing, you know, their 0211 Z line, which just came out this fall. It's kind of a weird release. Um, where they are making golf clubs for beginners, higher lofted drivers, a 16 degree driver, which a few years ago I would have said, why would you do that? But that absolutely makes sense now. You know, as I get older and I'm playing with older people, I'm playing with parents and friends that are older and things like that. And, and a lot of the people are telling me on drives, I'm not getting them high enough. And the reason is because even high lofted drivers are maybe 12 degrees. Maybe you can squeeze those up to 14, 13 and a half with the adjustable hosels. But to be honest, for a lot of people with their swing speeds, that's not enough. A 16 degree driver with the ability to loft it up to 17 up um, is, is actually preferable. And I don't know if I did a, a video on this. I, I, I didn't do a video dedicated to it, but I did a video on a five wood that I picked up, PXG five wood. And the reason I picked it up is because I had a three wood. So I thought, hey, I want something long. I wanted my driver in the bag for drives. And then, you know, on those long par fives, I want something to really kind of crush them. And I got this five wood and this three wood and I was hitting them and I was hitting the five wood farther. And it's all because of loft getting that ball higher. I was getting uh farther carry longer rollouts with the five wood than the three wood. So it wasn't a situation where I was like, ah, oh, it's close. The three wood is just a little bit longer, but it's not as forgiving. It wasn't, it wasn't even, it wasn't even a competition. As soon as I started really hitting those a couple times in the simulator, I was like, well, I'm going to the five wood and I haven't looked back. I don't want to carry a three wood anymore. So uh, gaming with Shahir, hi. How are you doing, man? Um, and uh, HK Tessie Miguf, um, good to see you here too. Brian, love that you guys are here. Sure should be. And Steven. Um, Steven is, makes... A great point here. And I think a lot of people would agree. He says, you can't buy a good swing. You have to earn it through perfect practice. Totally, totally. And, you know, I've, I've, 
seen some people, you know, especially in the lockdown, you know, golf was one of those things that you could do outside and, you know, it was fun and, and uh, compliant with all the, all the rules. And so a lot of people actually took up golf. I think, you know, um, in 2020, there was the biggest surge in new golfers. And one of the things that, you know, Stephen's talking about is I think a lot of people blame the equipment. You know, I like blaming the equipment because it can't be me. But, you know, a lot of people just bought some equipment off the rack, went out and started golfing and found it difficult. I know some people. And, you know, I, I, I would tell people, just take a lesson. Take one lesson, an hour long lesson, you know, from your pro, whatever, just kind of get the fundamentals, get someone to walk you through the grip and the swing and thinking about the release and all that jazz. You know, if you can sign up for a group class for a week, great, but at least get that introduction to it. It's, it's kind of like tennis or anything else. I think even a little bit of training and lesson and professional help at the very beginning is going to make it a lot easier on you. You know, it's golf is one of those things where it is very counterintuitive. A lot of what you do is counterintuitive, where you aim, how you swing, your attack angle, all those different things where you don't have to necessarily know all those terms now. But um, for example, a lot of people think that you want to swing up on the ball, right? You want the ball to fly high, so you want to swing up on it, kind of like in baseball maybe, right? But you are basically swinging down the ball because you can't really cut through grass. So it's just one of those things where you have to kind of be taught, uh, I think, some of the basics. So take some of those lessons. If you're new to it, if you're um, struggling with it, if you are thinking about trying it, you know, I would take a lesson before you <laughs> buy your clubs. And then if you are buying clubs as a beginner, I would check out those PXG 0211Zs because I think um, – I know a lot of guys have issues with playing irons that are kind of hybrids, you know, the really big backs to them. But I'll tell you what, if they made those in single length, I'd be all over it because I play single length. I'm probably a bigger fan of dual length, although I play single length and I'm probably going to stick with single length. But I think for most players, dual length is better. Um, have all the same length clubs from your three to six iron. Have all the same length clubs from your seven to wedge, or maybe it's three to seven iron and eight to wedge or something like that. So um, I think that's the case. Uh, PT YouTube. Thanks for joining me. First of all, reducing the standard shaft length by one inch, five foot seven, uh, has really helped my game with the driver. I've gained length two from doing it, even though more info suggests you would lose. Gives way more confidence. Totally. Uh, if uh, PT, you may have seen some of my videos where I've cut, I've cut driver shafts. I have a garbage can down by my little workbench, just filled with shafts because I have cut shafts. I've actually extended some shafts too because I was just wanted to see could I take a forty nine inch driver and bomb that thing? I I could barely hit it. I mean, I was probably only even making contact with the ball one out of three times. And when I was, you have to kind of slow everything down so it doesn't become any faster. But right now, this driver, this is which is my gamer driver right here in that, um, you know, here, why don't I just show you both of these? Uh, because I would call them both gamers. And what I want to show you here is that they're the same length. I can't just show you, but uh, it's lined up correctly there okay but they're the same length it's my tailor made sim 2 and my light speed driver here they're both gamer drivers uh for the most part and they are both 42 and a half inches because that is where i found i'm about your height pt 5 7 and that's where i found man i can hit the center relatively reliably obviously nothing's ever perfect and the sacrifice on distance is marginal so if I play a 45 inch driver, oh my accuracy is terrible, and I tend to have a, I tend to push it right, not just push it right, but slice it. My my bad hits with a 45 inch driver are are very distinct right turn slices, and it was brutal. And I actually even went down to a 37 inch driver, you know, looking for a, really a one length driver, and you know I can hit it. And actually, I still have it, and it's not right next to me. I would show it to you. It looks a little funny, and people always want to hit it, and I tell them to swing it like a sandwich. But I can hit that, you know, in the real world. Uh, I can put it about 210 yards. So I can put my 37-inch driver about there. Now, my full drives uh, this last year, I averaged about 241 or 242. So you think about a 42-and-a-half-inch driver versus a 37-inch driver, and I'm still only maybe 25 or 30 yards farther with it, and they are very, very different. So PT, I'm totally with you. I think the amount of speed that you lose, and I get that it's mathematics where you can, you can do the math. If everything stays the same, adding length will give you more, um, more speed at the tip. But 
in the real world, it doesn't just work like that. Your swing doesn't stay the same. You have more swing weight, assuming everything else stays the same. And so you tend to slow down. It feels heavier, all those types of things. You're trying to time things more. And so I, even though mathematically, I think you could lose uh, five or six, seven miles an hour per inch you shave, I think that when you shave or when you shorten those drivers, people feel more comfortable getting that swing speed up. It's a little easier to release, you know? And so um, I'm totally with you. And I don't know what the right length is for everyone, but I have made some very short, you know, 37, 38 inch drivers for some people who are a little shorter, a little older, you know, for my father, um, I have made a short driver for him and he hits that far better than he ever did a 45 inch driver. Um, and for me, 42 and a half, I, you know, even, even last, last summer I played 43 and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I can just um, improve that a little more. And so I, I, I trimmed it another half inch and I put in a, I've got a, a, a oh, I can't see it there. Uh, I think it's a 10 gram counterweight in there for this really ultra light grip. Um, and that has really helped. I think I'm going to go to a standard weight grip and, and remove the counterweight though uh, in my next iteration. But that is the case. Happy Gilmore <laughs> and uh, Shooter McGavin. I agree. Wish I could try that autoflex in my, you know, the autoflex is one of the things I, I wish, Devin, I'm with you. So this is the Autoflex. Um, it is a fantastic shaft. I wish there were some way to make this a little more democratized. And in fact, you know, I even thought about this because there are some other guys that do golf content on YouTube. And uh, there are a lot of skeptics about the Autoflex, and I totally get it. I totally was too. And um, Autoflex isn't sending them out. You know, they didn't send me this shaft. <laughs> so uh, I think that they have so much. One, I, I'm not sure how big of a company they are, but... One, they're getting a lot of press, and I'm sure they can sell every one they make, and it's six, seven, eight hundred bucks a shaft. Um, <laughs> why bother? Why bother uh, giving them away? But I, I've almost thought about trying to loan out my driver to see if people can get some of the results that I got. You know, because I am a very average driver. I know some of the other golf channels that are professional golfers. You know, guys, maybe that are on tours, but are have perfect pic, picture perfect swings and whatnot. You know, some of those have said they've gotten benefits. You know, people like Rick Shields have said he does not see any benefit from it. But I think when you have a picture-perfect swing, maybe your benefit is going to be minimized. And I think at that point, what you want is more is, is predictability in the shaft performance. And because of how much the autoflex flexes, I think that creates whippiness for us. And when I'm a little slow. I mean, my swing speeds can go anywhere from 88 to 94 miles an hour, depending on how I feel and how much oomph I'm giving it. And I think pros just tend to swing at their max speed, you know, maybe 120 mile per hour swing speed, 121 if they're pushing it, you know. And so um, to have a, a shaft that flexes all the time, you know, um, whatever brand it might be. At the same rate, it's very consistent. I think that benefits them, right? I It's kind of like uh, TXG. I love that channel. And Matty Boy said, you know, he wouldn't gain the autoflex, although he hits the longest bombs with the autoflex. And I kind of get that. I, I People at that range, like why take that extra 10 yards and give up just the, the feel and the consistency of the feel uh, from the shaft that you're hitting reliably at, you know, 10 yards shorter. You know, when you're talking about going from 320 to 310, all the par, par, par fours are short for you. So anyway, um, Andy, start my own weekly show. Well, I would love to get on here and live stream more often because I like hanging out with you guys. And I got lots of topics I want to talk about. But, um, you know, the one that inspired me was this Stealth Driver. Just came out. Can't even buy it. Someone said they were buying the sucker, though. Huh? Uh, I'm just going to scroll back here. Um, sure she should be. Shout out, Panda. You bought that Pine Meadow Putter? You know what's funny is I bought that Pine Meadow Putter. And I actually loaned it to my friend Ian because we golfed a lot this summer and he really wanted to go to a mallet. I think that's the one you're talking about. I've tried a couple, but uh, the Pine Meadow metal mallet putter, he was using a blade putter. I gave that to him and man, his first putt with it was as good as any of his putts. And all summer long, he played with it. And it's funny because it's a very inexpensive putter. And I think it just goes to show that, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get in this game. And there's some good equipment. And now I would say in putters, there is maybe the, a lack of technology. There isn't a lot of technology in putters. I mean, there is, but ultimately you don't have to have a lot of technology. You can go out and use a very, very old antique putter. And, you know, a lot of a lot of guys like them because of the feel. Um, and uh, Brian asked me, 
uh, asked if I was going to be picking up the new Tittle Meat Putter. I thought you were going to pick that one up. I was just glancing at the comment there, Brian. Um, I am probably not. Uh, you know, I, I say a lot of things and then do the opposite any, anyway. But I would love to try it. I, I think that duller sound would be nice. And here's the one other thing that I think the amateur... I meant to say amateur to show you how cultured I am. But the amateur golfer, I think, likes soft feel. I absolutely do. Because we don't like a lot of ringing in our hands because the amateur tends to hit off center maybe all the time, but more times than not. And so what you do is you get more vibration and harshness through the face of the club, the shaft, the grip, all of that right translated to your hands. And for us that hit 100 shots around as opposed to 60 shots around, you're getting twice as many hits. And they're more impactful and they're more ringing and harsh. Um, so I think people like a soft feel. So what I think, and I'd love to hit it, is I think that carbon fiber face will help deaden the feel. Now, I think if you're a pro, when I was watching some of these videos, they were saying, oh, I don't really, that felt like a miss hit, but it was a really good hit. That that felt like a good hit, but it was just a light, slight miss hit and they don't have as much feel. But I think for the amateur, that's actually a benefit. Um, for me, the golf ball I've been using, the ones I like, I really like the Callaway Chrome Soft. I played a lot with that at the beginning of the year. And then by the end, I was actually using the Wilson Duo Professional. It's a 60 compression golf ball. Uh, the My Golf Spy test showed that it's just as far as most of the other golf balls, even some of the high compression golf balls. But I think I like the feel because when you really want to go at it, you don't want to cringe like you're going to hit your golf ball on a concrete barrier or something, right? You want it to feel like you're swinging through everything. Um, and a soft golf ball allows you to have kind of that soft feel. Now, if you put a carbon fiber face on a soft golf ball, does it feel like you are swinging a wiffle bat at a marshmallow? Maybe. And I tell you what, if it does... I think most people like it. I think I will. So am I going to get it? I have no plans to get it, uh, particularly because um, it doesn't go any farther. But I am interested in the larger face and if that's more forgiving because I can hit the Sim 2 Max okay. And the softness of it. Um, so what I really have found is that I like fooling around with the weights on the driver. To me, Dialing in those weights really helps. And even on this light speed, I did a video on this. It actually allows you to put in four. You can see it has like three porthole weights, but then it has this rail here too. So it comes with these different weight aluminum rails basically that go in the middle. So it allows you, I think, even more weight adjustability than some of the big OEMs. Now, some of the big OEMs like the TaylorMade Sim 2 allow you to change this rear weight quite a bit. And so you can buy these aftermarket from anywhere from, I think, six grams up to like 30 plus grams. So that allows you a lot of adjustability. Um, you know, the Callaways and stuff, they don't, you know, they don't allow as much. And so I actually like playing with the weights, um, you know, helps counteract my slice tendency just a little bit. And so uh, I, I don't know what kind of weights he uses. And my issue with this is that usually a brand will come out with a new weight for every new driver, which kills me because um, I had a Cobra Speed Zone driver and then I got the Cobra Rad Speed driver because they seem pretty similar, but I really wanted that Infinity, you know, um, I really wanted to try that Infinity face with the new radial weighting and the weights aren't interchangeable. They're like different shaped chevrons or something. And so I had to buy a weight kit to test that out and that kind of annoyed me uh, so much so. It's not like Cobra was helping me out on it, but I didn't even do a video on that driver because I got it and I was like, now nah, I got to buy a whole new weight kit just to see if I like this driver more. So I tried it and I ended up selling that uh, driver on eBay. Um, so I didn't even stick with it because it just didn't allow me to use the myriad of weights that I already have. And that's actually kind of one of the things I like about PXG is they've kind of gone to the standard round weight. So if you have anything from the Proto to the 0211 to the, uh, you know, what are, to the to the new Gen 4s, all those weights are the same. So you, if you have one of their weight kits or an aftermarket weight kit, you don't have to sweat it. You can go down to two and a half gram weights up to 35 gram weights if you want. So I like that. Um, Josh asks, how fast can the newer neck fan charge up, Pete? It's a good question. You know, I'm usually when I'm using them, I'm not sitting around hopefully, you know, plugging in and being like, oh, that's an hour. I want to use it right away. So usually I plug in stuff and uh, try it out um, and just let it sit. And it's often hours before I come back. Um, so I, I wish I could, I wish I had an answer for you. I just don't know. I actually don't even know what the battery capacity is in there. So, um, but I do like those neck fans. 
I, I know they look goofy, but for me, I will tell you the probably the place I wear the most is when I'm out in my garage or I'm doing some yard work, I will carry it. And in fact, I have the neck band right in my desk here because if I'm going outside, it's a hot day, you know, I'll grab a drink or something with me, but then I'll just throw that on. I won't even necessarily run it until you know I'm starting to feel a little hot and sweaty, but then I can throw it on. To be honest. I should probably pull one in my golf bag because there are some days out in the golf course, man, and I wouldn't swing with it on, but there are some days you're just waiting in the hot sun on, underneath the, the canopy of the golf cart, and it's just blazing hot, blazing hot. Uh, Michael Valorand, welcome. I think that's the first time I've seen you on one of the live streams, Michael. Have you ever tried a wedge with an eight iron shaft tipped? Apparently a lot of pros are doing it. Um Odyssey line offers a blade putter with 5,000 MOI, which is totally new. Usually mail it or 5,000. Um, so... Two, two uh, different questions here. Have I tried the wedge with the eight iron shaft tipped, which is like this professional secret thing? Uh, I, I I hadn't heard of that until this year, and I have. I should say this. I did not know about that to try it. I have kind of done that though, um, because of the, um, because of how modified i have made my single length irons what i've actually done is i've gone with a wedge shaft and then i buy um you know 10 of the not not wedge shaft an iron shaft i've gone with a standard iron shaft one iron shaft generally um uh built for like a nine iron and then i use that in all my single length iron clubs so instead of a seven iron length one one length set I use a nine iron length set. And that means in my wedges, so I will put those same shafts in my wedges and um, they're generally a little heavy. And I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking I might change that. They're like an 80 gram shaft and I really like it. And I might keep them in my wedges because I like a little heavier feel in the wedges. Um, but that's the closest I've done it. And I just did it inadvertently because I was like, I want all my clubs to feel the same. In fact, when I took the clubs, my Cobra uh, Rad Speeds apart, I actually weighed them <laughs> and on, on the scale just to make sure that, you know, that five iron head was the same as that nine iron head and all that stuff. And, you know, you do a little bit of adjustment. I did actually did a little bit of adjustment of grinding on the toe weights to get them a little closer so that they were all exactly the same. Now, once you epoxy everything and, you know, all that stuff, there's going to be a little variation in it. But I have never intentionally done it, I, but I might have unintentionally done something similar, Michael. Um, Odyssey offers a blade putter with 5,000 MOI. I did not know that. I definitely would check that out. Um, I use the Lab Golf B2 putter, which I don't know how much MOI it has, but it's a pretty heavy putter. And it's a blade. It's their blade because it's the only one I can stand looking at, although they have this new Meza putter which is kind of a blade with fangs and it's supposed to be even more forgiving but i'll tell you what that that lab golf is, putter is the best putter i've ever played with the adele uh eas putter is a, a close second um i still have both of them i love the way the adele looks and feels um but that lab golf putter i could get in exactly the way i wanted it uh the adele would only go down to a 68 degree angle for me the lab golf would go to 67 which is perfect for me um, but if Odyssey, I've loved the Odyssey putters in the past. If that's still around, I might check that out. Do I work in tech? Uh, Andy, uh, that's a good question. I'm, I might ask you to, uh, clarify that. Are you asking, do have I ever done like, do I, do I have an interest in tech to like do tech reviews or do I work in technology like a, as a full-time job? Um, cause the answer is no, I don't work in technology as a full-time job. I, I, I always thought I might as a kid, and a buddy of mine actually did, but I realized I didn't quite have the mind, the aptitude, or the interest quite in it. Um, Chess the Alley Cat. Hmm, it's a cool name. What instruments do you use to groom your manly parts? <laughs> well, Black & Decker uh, cordless chainsaw. <laughs> Just kidding. Terrible joke. Um, you know what? It's it's funny is that you mentioned that because I've actually done some reviews on the nether regions um, uh, products. You know um, the, the 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 various uh, uh, manly creams. You know the anti sweat creams and stuff like that. And even some shavers. I think I tested on like a, a tennis ball or something like that. And I want to say um, the the groomer that I like the best or the one that I personally use is like Bic. And I want to say that I know that there are some brands, you know, um, 
kind of the the big advertiser ones. I've never used them. You know, I've never had a deal to get one or a coupon code, and they have been pretty expensive. And I always kind of wondered, you know, at 10 times the price, are they any better than some of these other ones? And I would say that the ones I've used, it, I, I think it was big. I could, I could, I could go check, but um, works great, has lasted a long time. Uh, it's comfortable to use, is effective. And I think it was only maybe $20, sub $30. Maybe it was like 29 bucks, uh, but sub $30, and it's been great. And I I don't know. I can't really imagine what a $100 or $200, you know, um, device, how much better it could be. But I could be wrong. I've been wrong about a lot of things. I was wrong about the autoflux, and uh, that one uh, impressed me more than I expected. So hopefully that helps uh, answer that question. But... Um, between all those uh, those things, I just wanted to say that, yes, I would love to test the new tailor-made carbon fiber driver. Oh, I also wanted to say a lot of people are talking about, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20, 20 years ago, Callaway had a carbon fiber driver, carbon fiber driver face driver, and I didn't even know that. The carbon fiber driver that I was aware of was called Yonex, and I don't know, like the ADX 200 or something like that. And this was also probably about 20 years ago. And people were saying like, oh, carbon fiber drivers are junk and they didn't work very well. And, and that's absolutely positively, you know, true, I'm sure, because we never saw them again. But I remember when I was golfing, I think everything was still steel. Yonex came out with this driver. It looked really cool. It had kind of this ridge back on the top and then these kind of indentations on the side it was a cool looking driver and the only time i saw it was when i would be lucky enough to be at a country club and rich people were playing it i don't remember how much it cost but as far as i could tell those yonix drivers were probably the most expensive drivers that you could buy on the market and i think they were fully carbon fiber and seemed like they sold well i mean i you know i'll probably be wrong about the 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 number but i would you know at a time when Drivers were two, three hundred bucks. This could have been a six or seven hundred dollar driver, and so I remember seeing them, and I would look at them, and they, I was like, "They are cool." I don't know how they played, but they've been out before, and I think they they did well at some point. So Reese, good to see you, man. Um, hope everything's going well. And uh, that's all I want to talk about. New drivers. I'm not picking it up, but uh, still watching PGA merch event. I think is. January 25th, so in a few weeks here, we're probably going to see a lot of unveilings of a lot of other golf products. I'm really curious to see if there is something that would interest me. Reese Hart, new sub, wants a shout-out? Well, Reese, you get a shout-out. Welcome. Welcome to the Panda Research Institute. Um, You seem like the type of guy who'd excel in business. Ah, uh, thanks, Andy, man. Well, we should catch up sometime. Um, Want to hear more about what you got going on? Yeah, no, I worked uh, in corporate America for a long, long time uh, in financial services. So not in tech, financial services. So um, I, I like it. Had its ups and downs. Um, I was thinking of doing more of a video on that. All right. I, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here because uh, Andy kind of primed me for an interesting question. And um, I am going to let you know of something that's not going to officially happen till Friday, but a few people have discovered it already. So I am setting up, I'm going to do a, an official announcement about this, um, setting up a group of, you know, it's not going to be on Facebook. It's actually going to be on Mighty Network. So it's totally independent. So we can talk about whatever we want. But a lot of people have asked me about things like my career and what I do for a living and, you know, how I get products, where to make my money and all the, all sorts of other things, you know, and like how much time do you put in and like how long did it take you to, uh, get your subs or how do you get subs or, you know, thumbnails or whatever it might be. Um, so it can be anything, but a lot of those topics just aren't really core to, I think what the channel's about, which is really kind of documenting the products that I pick up throughout my life just to make it a little bit better. So I'm putting up a group. So if you want to come in and have like a live stream like this, where we just go over the nitty gritty of something that might be a little off the rails, but uh, you know, I might be able to help with that's uh, where I'm going to do it. So I'm going to be doing live streams there on a regular basis uh, taking questions, you know, if people have 
interested in specific products they want reviewed, we can talk about them there. If I can get my hands on them, uh, that would be awesome. And we'll try to do reviews on those. But man, I would love it. Andy, if you would uh, be interested in joining that, I would love to have you there. I'll put links in the description to that. You can sign up now, but the official launch won't be till this weekend. And then we will get cracking with that. So lots of other stuff for the people that want to join there. But it's really for the people that want to go more behind the scenes, more in depth. And uh, like I said, talk about career, jobs, whatever it might be, you know, so, so all that jazz. So all that jazz wasn't that like a musical or something right uh fake iphone video with the fake iphone 13 yeah um i was thinking of pulling another prank and smashing one of those and just seeing if people be like it's funny when i do like a fake smash i don't do them like uh, very often but i i broke a fake iphone once and people were like if you were just gonna break it why didn't you send the money to me which is funny because it's not like you're gonna break something and then be like you know i'm not gonna break this and i want to just reach out to some random person on the internet and be like hey you want me to send you some money so, uh, eugenics levy, hmm. Eugene Levy, are you interested in the physics of time and the notion of time dilation? Yes, I am. Let's discuss time dilation. I've always been interested in, you know, on the fourth dimension, the space time dimension, right? How we can manipulate that. I really feel like that's a key to us breaking through the, um, the light speed barrier, right? As opposed to just going fast, I think what we're 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 um, conflating sometimes is um, our objective is to go from point A to point B in a reasonable amount of time, and we think about speed as opposed to kind of uh, warping that uh, time space continuum. Anyway, let's talk more about it. Reese, Andy, look forward to seeing y'all y'all there. Um, thanks so much for joining me again today on my little rant about golf clubs. And why I'm intrigued when I'm not buying it. Until next time, Peter Von Panda. Out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper.